Someone is collecting weeds by the side of the road, on walkways, and at the edges of buildings. This is not random. They are doing it with purpose. They have measured out an area of about 5 metres square and they are pulling up all the plants, all the weeds in that area, roots and all. The process is scientific. They carefully record the location and the date of collection. But this is not just science. It is also an art project and these scientific details will become part of the title of that artwork. All the weeds collected from that area by this curious individual will be combined, amassed, into one new creation to form a superweed, or in the words of the German philosopher Goethe, an archetypal plant, an uberplant, the creation of a new class of plant, a hybrid connected only by where they were found. The artist is Australian Carolyn Rothwell, and we are going to study her method, the way she behaved as an artist, to create our own art. This video explores why artists and art students study other artists. There are many ways of studying an artist, just looking at their work, learning about their life, copying their style, copying their technique or studying their processes, their methods. What all these ways have in common is that they are ways of improving our own skills and gaining inspiration. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up and comment down below. Studying other artists helps us grow our creativity, improve our skills and be inspired in new ways. In this video, we will study Carolyn Rothwell's method, specifically the way she stimulated her imagination and generated ideas for an ongoing series of artworks about plants and hybrids. By learning her method, we hope to use this as a springboard for our own imaginations to help us create our own unique artworks. So in this art activity, we're not aiming to copy Rothwell's artworks, but we will copy the steps she took leading up to her artworks. The steps she took to open her imagination to new possibilities. The steps she took to discover what she had not yet thought of. We're going to copy her discovery method, and then we're going to see what different directions our imaginations might discover. Ready? Let's break down her method. Let's find out what her steps were. Right at the start of this video, I spoke of Carolyn Rothwell walking along streets looking for those unwanted anonymous plants that we call weeds. She would mark out an area and then start collecting. Let's remind ourselves and follow the same steps. The first step is to find a place with lots of weeds on the side of the road, in cracks in the pavement, in vacant lots, at the edge of playgrounds. Then select an area of a few meters square and look closely at the variety of weeds growing there so that you can decide which ones you want to collect. Carefully pull up the weeds you want, roots and all. Grip the plant at the base of the stem so that your fingers and thumb are touching the dirt and then gently tug the plant until the roots let go of the ground. The next step is to document your weeds. Write down the place name or street name where you collected them, plus the date and time. Maybe you also know or can find out the species names, that's a bonus. Now carefully lay out each weed on a sheet of paper or a plain surface and photograph them one at a time in a good light. Because the weeds are going to wilt and wither quickly, you need to photograph them as soon as you have collected them. Now the next stage is a combination of documenting and beginning to activate your imagination. Carefully draw your weeds. More specifically, Using line drawing, patiently record the outlines of all the details that delight you in the weeds. 
You might want to draw or even trace parts or the whole weed, whichever aspects intrigue you. And you might want to make some colour notes. These first five steps should be done in one session while the weeds are still looking fresh. The final two steps are where you get to experiment and then create. So these should be done when you have time and with your art materials with you. These stages are all about combining shapes from your weeds recorded in your photographs and drawings into new forms, into imaginary hybrid forms. First, you want to play with the shapes you collected. You will need about one hour for this. Look again at your sketches and your photos and choose a set of shapes you would like to experiment with by combining them into new shapes. Play with as many hybrid combinations and shape inventions as you can. This is the experimental visual brainstorming stage. Don't be too quick to choose the one. Experimenting is all about having an open mind as you try different combinations. Experimenting is about not doing what you already know, but playing around until you discover things you would never have thought of. When you have filled several sheets of paper with ideas, step back and have a look at what has emerged. Maybe your playful imagination has created insect-like hybrids from the leaf parts, or fantastical fossils, or impossible architecture, or faces, or an imaginary zoo full of creatures, or what? There is no limit to what your imagination might give birth to. Plan, gather materials, and make. Now for our bonus section. Carolyn Rothwell invites you to create your own hybrid plant online. Infinite Herbarium is an artwork by Carolyn Rothwell built with friends from Google Creative Lab, which invites you to explore an infinite number of machine learning generated plants, as well as creating your own specimens using plants from your own garden or neighborhood. Here's how it works. Open the QR code below on your phone or tablet. Photograph two plant specimens from your garden or neighborhood. And watch as a hybrid species evolves as a morphing generated artwork. Here's the QR code. And here are those three steps again. Why not try it?